Okay, so we're right on 12.30, so we might kick things off and people can just join when, they, when they're ready. So, hello, good afternoon, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our first interactive webinar in our series, How to Build a Successful Allied Health Practice. Uh, so today's session, we will explore the purpose and goals of your practice uh, from a personal, financial and practical position. So my name is Charles Broadfoot and I'm one of the professional development officers with Hunter New England Central Coast, PHM. So I'd like to acknowledge um, the First Peoples and traditional custodians of the lands in which we are meeting on today and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. So today's session is being recorded. So the recording and the PowerPoint slides uh, will become available from tomorrow in our education library on our website. Um, so you will be able to rewatch this or if you did have a colleague who um, registered and may not be able to attend live, they can definitely catch up uh, from tomorrow. So um, for the, the part of the presentation where, where Marcus is providing some didactic information, I'll just ask you to pop your microphone on mute. Um, if you do have a question, um, I encourage you to use the raise hand function. So you should have this. It'll either be in the top right hand corner. It's a little smiley face with a hand or it might be in the panel in the middle down the bottom um, of your screen. Um, if you raise your hand, I'll invite you to unmute and, um, and ask your question. Um, also note, we have allocated a little bit of time at the end to, to go through some questions with Marcus. Um, so to make this session more interactive, we are using um, polling through Slido. Um, so we would love you to participate in this. Um, Slido is just an interactive platform and I'd recommend accessing this on your phone. So you'll see there we've got on the screen a QR code. So if you just get your phone out and scan that QR code, I know we're all very familiar with QR codes um, and just that'll take you to the polls. Um, Alternatively, if you don't have your phone with you, you can just do this in, in, in a browser. So um, you just head to slido.com, so S-L-I-D-O, and our event code for today is AH1. Easy to remember, Allied Health, and then the one is because it's our first session. Um, so your answers in Slido are anonymous. Um, so yeah, if you get that ready to go, we'll shortly have our first poll. Um, there'll also be a short evaluation survey that I'll launch through Slido. Um, I'll remind you of this at the end of the session. Um, so please complete this because we always appreciate your feedback. Um, and it's also, um, I'll need you to do that so I can issue you with a certificate of attendance. So now it's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker and our speaker for the series, Marcus Croak. So Marcus has been a business coach since 2005, which was a natural progression from owning businesses and being employed across many areas, including retail, importing, wholesale, transport, and education. He holds a Bachelor of Education with honors and numerous coaching accreditations, including life, team, business, and executive coaching from Results Coaching Systems and Action Coach. Starting his career in uh, teaching HSE Science, Marcus has evolved his skills to coaching numerous business owners to become successful leaders of high performance teams. So that's all the housekeeping from me. I'll hand over to you, Marcus. Uh, thanks very much there, Charles. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is actually use the chat today um, and just type in there and tell me where you are and what the weather's like. I'm located in Aberdare, Lower Hunter Valley, just next to Sestock. We've got a lovely day here today, not too hot, not too cold, and looking forward to today. Uh, Charles mentioned in the intro that um, I was a teacher at one stage, studying uh, teaching science, taught physics. I've done many, many things, including owning a number of businesses, so it's not just theoretical with what I talk about. Last business I owned was called Touchscreen Solutions in Sydney, still operating. I ended that on a three-year deal um, and sold out of it after three years when we built it up. So we're also going to ask you to use Slido for the first time today. Charles is going to get that ready. So if you've got it there, if you haven't got it there, you can just use the camera for the QR code like we do when we're going into shopping centres and just enter a word with uh, how are you feeling today? Very simple. And do I need to stop? Um, oh no, that'll just come up. Here we are, excited, multitasking. Oh, that's an interesting one. Good, oh, I wanna get you feeling more than good. We have gotta do that today, we have gotta do more than good. So, 
Look at all the people. Port Stevens. No windows in your office, Mary Ann. That's no good. Gina, West Gosford. I was a coastie for over three decades. Gina. Inverell, sunny and bright. Lovely. Great day down the coast. Yep. Rachel, Tamworth. Um, Newcastle. All over the Hunter Valley. Beautiful day in Newcastle. Thanks, Kylie. Uh, who else have we got in there? Trent's down in Newcastle. Go, Trent, Emma, Tamworth. Yes, Nicola, not too hot, not too whatever today. We don't need the grass to grow another six inches this weekend. So how have we got overwhelmed? Oh, we might need to have a chat afterwards to get you um, out of feeling overwhelmed. The other thing I thank you for that. The other thing I'd like you to put in the chat, is there anything that what brought you to today? Is there anything in particular that you're looking for out of today? So I can work on answering that question as we go through the day. What we're going to do today, uh, we're actually going to be pretty quick, but at the same time, we're going to cover some detail. We're going to be steady in our quickness and hopefully have some fun along the way. Improving service delivery and efficiency. So I think, Kylie, what we do today uh, is absolutely paramount in to improve your surface delivery and efficiency will come when we look at the organisational chart. In today's introduction to these things, I could do three hours easily on each one of their um, topics down here. General interest, thanks Trent. Anyone else got anything in particular they'd like to find out today or what brought them here today that they can share in the chat? Would be great. Purposeful order to my somewhat chaotic style. <laughs> okay, we might have more to do than we'll solve today there, Rachel, but we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, develop myself this year in work-life balance. Cool, Gina, and we'll, we'll do that. One of my things is that it's all life. Everything's part of life, so work is a section of life. So we've got to get it right because we've got to enjoy what we're doing. And uh, psychologists tell us that, that having meaning to our life purpose to what we're doing is the best way for us to actually enjoy our life, whether that's that's uh, personal meaning through, you know, bringing up kids, there's the meaning for the outside world. And that's what this stuff is all about here today that we're talking about. So we're talking about coming up with a purpose for the vision. Um, work smarter, Emma? Yeah, absolutely. And this whole series is about about working smarter over a period of time, leaping from owner operator to growing business with employees. Um, thanks, Mary Ann. We have a definition of, of business, which is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. Uh, so even in a not-for-profit, there, there might be, well, there's normally, the excess funds aren't distributed to private people, but they might be reinvested or there's projects to get money to invest in. So profit comes in many different ways and the work without you is does not mean that you don't have to be there. Or it should mean that you don't have to be there. It's your choice whether you're there or not. You can pay a commercial rate for somebody else to do the job. That's the overall uh, development of the big business, which can take a, quite a number of years to achieve to get there. So um, we're looking at the three faces of vision. When we're looking at where are we going and therefore the purpose of the business, we're looking at three different parts. The external is what does the world see? And often that's coupled with the purpose statement and that's what we're going to talk about today. The internal is so what's it look like? If we're going to go and produce that thing and I'll give you a couple of examples, then, then what does that business have to look like who are the people, the what, where, when, that's one of your worksheets that you've been sent uh, beforehand. And then there's the personal, what are you going to get out of it? What's, it's the what's in it for you. You can start normally at either of these. You can start at the external, what's the vision for the business, or you can start with the personal, this is what I want, and therefore the business has to become something in the future. Uh, it doesn't matter where you start, it's going to suit you, we'll, we'll deal with all of that along the, the way. So the next thing I want you to put in there, we've got a couple of other Slido's uh, questions for you, so I do know who's here and how to address it. Uh, and please do ask questions either in the, in the chat, um, depending on how suitable it is along the way 
to raise your hand and we'll bring you on mic because I do want this to be interactive, not me just talking. Um, so the next question is going to come up in Slido. What is your role in your organisation? Are you the owner, meaning you don't um, you know, work in the business at, at all? You're just the owner. Are you a manager? Are you a health professional so you don't have any management or ownership responsibilities or all of the above or some of like two or more of the above really there? All of the above, most people, okay. So uh, I can't see how many people have actually answered. Um, oh, 11, okay. Manager, all of the above. So you get 58% of one and 58% of another. I'm not quite sure how the maths works on that, but we've got a fair spreading out then of people who are owning and running the businesses. Uh, thank you. And then the next question's going to come up so we know is about how many people are in your organisation. So, Marcus, I might just jump in because we've had uh, quite a few people join since uh, we sure. started okay. the webinar. So uh, what Marcus is referring to for those who have recently joined us is Slider. Thank you, Marcus. So we're doing some poll questions and we'd love you to participate. Um, if you, It's easiest just to do this on your phone so you can scan that QR code and that will take you straight to the, the polls or you can use go to slido.com, S-L-I-D-O, and enter our event code AH1 to participate. Okay, and we've got a, a quite a range of businesses on here. Um, a lot of sole traders with no help from the look of, looks of things to a small business like mine, um, and quite a few with over 20 people. It's quite a business involved there. Okay, so we're going to have to address things all around the place, and please feel free to hop on and like in the chat, Charles will monitor that and um, any questions that come up or raise your hand and we can bring you on if there's questions or you just want to chat about something with me. As I said, we're going to go pretty fast. It's uh, we're really doing an intro to these things to get through. So let's get back to this. Three faces of vision, external. What does the world see out there and what are you putting out there to the world is the number one thing here. Internal. So what's the vision when you look at it? What does it look like inside the business when you are achieving the vision? Vision is, is the picture. If you painted a picture of your business in the future, what does it look like? External might say, what does the world look like if your business is achieving its purpose? The internal would say, here's all the logical structural things of the business. And the personal would say, Here's what I get out of my life. Here's what I want from my life. And what I was saying was that the, the endpoints, the, they're all endpoints, and it doesn't really matter where you start from. We can work with how your mind works to get where you want to go. The most watched video on earth about this is Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, if you've heard with him with Start With Why. He's got a great book. It's a great 17 minute video that you can watch to get the idea of, you know, why are you doing what you're doing, which is really, really important. Um, and there's another book, Find Your Why, written after that. So I'll give you a couple of examples of the external vision, and then we can work on, well, what's the purpose of your business along the way? So here's one. So one of the organisations I'm involved in is Action Coach Business Coaching. So they're the organisation, they're an Australian franchise now based in Los, in Las Vegas. <laughs> Got to go where the casinos are. Now based in Las Vegas. It's the world's largest business coaching organisation, been around since 1993. The vision of Action Coach is world abundance. So that's the, what it looks like. And then the rest of it is through business re-education. So if we are setting out to achieve something, it is world abundance. What does that mean? It means that in the world, there is enough money and food for everyone to be a millionaire and everyone to be fed three times a day. So that's something that is way, way out there. Not going to happen in my lifetime. Uh, like the, the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal, it's a long, long way away. But everyone who is part of that organisation, there's over a thousand offices around the world. 
thousand different franchises and many people working in each one. So we conservatively uh, deal with about 15,000 businesses per week in coaching. We're aiming for those people to become abundant so that they can have their teams, their families, their communities reach abundance. And ultimately we get world abundance. And we do that through using our knowledge and skills to re-educate people about business. Because we know you have skills, you have knowledge, you have experience, all of those things there. So it's a, let's look at that again and re-examine it and see what it can um, do. So Brad Sugars, the founder of Action Coach, when he founded it, sat down and thought, what am I going to do for the world? He's originally called the business Action International because he didn't want it to be Southeast Brisbane Business Coaching. He wanted to have a bigger impact on the world. That's how he thought. So that's what it was all about for him. So we drive everything in the business, in the organisation, has to answer that question. Are we heading towards world abundance? The other one I'm, I'm part of is called Profit First. There's a book called Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, which is about cash management in your business. But that came about because Mike himself became broke. Uh, he built some businesses, sold them, thought he was rich, spent all the money and then was broke. So he, he worked on, it's basically an envelope system if you've come across that or Barefoot Investor written by Scott Pate in Australia um, for, for dealing with your personal financials and, and creating wealth over time. It's basically taking envelopes, you know, put your pay into different envelopes for different things. We do that in business. But what Mike, Mike came up with, the purpose of his business, the purpose of his life now is to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty. So we know this, and I come across it all the time, there's lots of business owners who are going to work, working hard, working harder and harder and harder, and don't seem to get anywhere with their, their profitability, with their, with their cash, and they're stressed. It's doing all sorts of horrible things to them. The other thing that I want to point out there is here are businesses that talk about profit, like the action definition, as I said, world abundance through business re-education. Re the definition, though, a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. But the ultimate thing that we're doing is working towards world abundance in the world, strangely enough. So that's a, a guiding, you know, the purpose of the business is to create that. For me, that becomes um, empowering. Uh, yes, Kylie, we can give you the, I'll give you the PDF. That's fine. Um, the, the, I, my business is aimed towards empowering people to live exceptional lives. You're in businesses, organisations, practices, whatever you like to call them, that can really make a positive difference in a particular way. Now, the interesting thing, this is a mate of mine who we sat down a few weeks ago. So he's been through a number of businesses. He, uh, I brought him into coaching a number of years ago. He left to do other things. He's a pastry chef by trade, and he now owns two cafes in Sydney. And we sat down about a month ago now, because he said, I want to really get clear on the purpose of my, my business, what's going on with the business. So after hearing the story of his um, life, he comes from Goa in India, uh, and we talked about his family and growing up and what his father did. He came up with um, you know, that what he wants to do is make a positive difference in a human's life. Now, like the others that I've presented, this is the guide for him about his business. Every question in this business can be answered by referring to this purpose. So when they're doing something in the cafe, they can ask the question, does this make a positive difference in a human's life? Now, if the answer is no, they definitely will not do it. If the answer is yes, it means they can do it. Doesn't mean you have to. Okay, so that's the that's the great thing when you get the purpose, the vision, and the purpose right. That you have a question that you can ask about everything that takes place in your practice, and if it doesn't meet with that purpose, it lets you know that it's the wrong thing to do. Uh, if you want to investigate some more about that, if you have a look at um, Johnson and Johnson's credo. And there's a story about Tylenol when they took it off the shelves and it cost them millions of dollars years ago because somebody had injected nasty things in there and they legally didn't have to. But that's because it came back to the what the purpose of Johnson & Johnson was as a company. And they said, in keeping with that, this is what we have to do. So that brings us then to the instant purpose, the worksheet that I handed out to you. 
So we look at these things. And so this is, again, an introduction to get you somewhere, to get you thinking forward about what this might look like for you. So it's very simple. Um, you might have had a chance to do this beforehand. List three talents or skills that you might like to use in the form of nouns. Is there someone there that's brave enough to hop on and tell me about their skills? Someone want to open up? No? Or type in the chat for me. Uh, what are the talents or skills that you have? Just words that come up for the, for the particular profession that you're in. What are the talents or skills that, that you have? So I'll tell you mine. I've written down in doing the instant purpose statement, knowledge. So I've spent a lot of years, I say to a lot of the business owners I've worked with, that um, you know they've spent years learning their trade. What I've learned from being in different businesses and then ended up studying was how to be good at running businesses. So I said, you know, you might be good at drilling, putting PowerPoints in houses. I'm good at running businesses and making them profitable and building teams and building that uh, you know exceptional life for everyone, not just for the owner. It's about the team. The proudest moments I have in my business coaching business. Uh, when owners tell me about what their kids are now doing. And I've been doing it long enough and with people for long enough, you know, individual owners that I've seen their uh, kids grow up and what they've achieved. In fact, I'm a, I'm a marriage celebrant. That's some people play golf. I uh, do weddings. I don't do a lot of them. I do a couple of dozen a year, uh, but I've married two of the kids that I've put, performed the ceremony, solemnized the marriage, the technical term of two of the uh, children of clients that I've had. Networking, clinical skills, research skills, fantastic. Communication, compassion, advocacy, oh, I love that. Time management, interesting one, Joanne. Knowledge, resilience, I love resilience. If you've read the um, Hugh Van Clay thing -o book on that, fantastic. People skills, communication, encouragement, and teaching. Awesome, I wrote down knowledge, communication, skills, systems. Then the next part, once we know those, what are three activities that you like doing that best express the above skills? So if you can type those in the chat for me, that would be great. Again, for me, the three things that I love doing that help where I can utilize those skills towards my purpose is coaching, speaking and content creation. So coaching the people, my clients that I work with, speaking, um, what day are we up to? Wednesday, Monday morning, I went down to the small business networking group at, at Wyong, the Nexus hub there. If you ever want to pop along, they run them around the coast. And I talked about what's the difference between profit and cash with them for about half an hour. So I love getting out there and speaking. Uh, and content creation, creating blogs, videos. Um, I go on, well, I haven't done it this year, but you know, Facebook Lives and all those sorts of things about to start a new podcast to get the knowledge out to people. So, you know, what do you like to do? And that could be the, the actual profession that you have at the moment, you know. Clinical research, oh yeah, interesting, Kelly. Collaborating with other services, working with patients, yep. Uh, working with patients directly. Motivating, teaching, helping, fantastic. Training, educating and growing knowledge, awesome. So we get these, uh, putting putting these together. And then the last thing there, the my ideal world is one in which, so for me, I wrote down, well, if I'm, if I'm looking at the world, how would I like it to be? It's a bit like world peace. You know, I'd like to achieve world peace, but it's everyone lives a life of abundance in every way. So abundance is, is receiving. It's also giving uh, abundance of we, we have time, abundance of um, we're, we're not um, stressed by finances abundance of love in the world. Abundance is in many, many different ways. It's important that it's giving and receiving. Okay, you have to be abundant in receiving, it will open to have that coming in. So that's really important to me. That's actually what I see. If I achieve what I achieve, that's what I'd like to see, that everyone has a life of abundance in every way. Mentoring, learning, climate action is taken seriously. Cool. So if you had that ideal world, Elizabeth, that's a really good one, because if you had that ideal world, what would the world look like if climate action is taken seriously? We go to that next step. What's the picture? If climate action was taken seriously, if that was your purpose to um, effectively work on climate action, you know, what would the vision of the world be? And then we, we 
refine that with the, if that's the vision of the world, what's my purpose? So if climate action is taken seriously, what's my purpose to advocate for climate action? You know, is that the purpose of the business, uh, of the organisation? Because then again, the question becomes, is what I'm doing when I make a decision about whatever's going on, is that leading me to, is it helping fulfil the purpose of advocating for climate change? My ideal world, Kylie, thank you. Collaboration, support, life balance. No conflict, respect, joy, teamwork, kindness. Yeah. Can you wrap that up into, oh, is that you again? Equity and equality. Awesome. Awesome. So it's thinking about that. And this goes, if you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy, I'm a huge fan of Maslow's hierarchy in its simplest form. And it comes back to, this is what my life's about, the self-actualization. And then he talked about after the five stages, there's, there were more work on it was, well, when I actually get to do what I want to do, then I, um, then I look to how do I benefit the world? People respect themselves and each other. Fantastic. So if that's what the world looked like, Damien, you know, what's your purpose? I have words like that. My three driving words are, are care, consideration and courtesy, all coming from the same roots. Uh, but, you know, care is, is love, uh, courtesy, uh, that same thing. Are we respectful to one another? Uh, consideration, am I actually considering what's going on? So you can fill that in there. And then when you move to the next page, if you're pretty much just listing the three words again. So I've got my, I will use my knowledge, communication skills and systems. So it's a little bit different. Um, oh no, that's exactly the same, sorry. I'll use my knowledge, communication skills and systems that I have in place by coaching, speaking and creating content to, now this is where I've changed mine a little bit from the ideal world, is my purpose is then empower people to live exceptional lives. So all of this again today is moving you forward on that thinking process. Because this can take, and they change over time. If you have a look at um, Zappos, the shoe store online, I've watched them intently over the years and it's changed over time. We don't expect anything to actually be static. You get other versions of this that you, know, you might, um, did I see that earlier on? The, the Microsoft was a computer on every desk. Action Coach actually has up there on their website now, a, and it's been around for a while, but a coach in every business. But that's not really a purpose. That's not what is achieved by doing that. Microsoft as a, a computer on every desk to me is an internal look at the business. And it's, what's that doing for people? It's where Apple did really well by having their Think Different campaign. And again, I suggest going and watching Simon Sinek start with why to explain that you know, people are creative and what Apple did is provide the tool for them to be creative. So then we're along with the purpose. How are we going so far? But that brings us, so that's the external. Now I market that by the way. So that ties in when we come to marketing, we're working with a roofer at the moment and the statement we've come up with for his business is the most uh, trusted and reliable roofing company. So again, everything that happens in that company then has to be, has to answer to that question. Is this leading us to be a trusted and reliable roofing company? If the answer is yes, it's okay to do it. Doesn't mean you have to, but it's okay to do it. If the answer is no, then you definitely can't do it. But then we lead on to this thing. So this is the internal. The internal is asking. So if that's what you're going to create, what is the, the picture of that business in the future? What do you imagine that business to be if it's actually going to fulfill your dream? If I go back to action, the world abundance through, through business tree through education, to have world abundance, to help create that, then you've got to have a coach in every business. It might be an action coach, but it's got to be a coach in every business around the world. So how big's that organisation got to be? And interestingly, when it comes to things like um, the business that works without you, so Brad Sugars now no longer works in that business. He's working on the business as chairman of the board. He's got CEOs around the world doing things, but a thousand offices around the world, a headquarters in Las Vegas creating content. So what is it for you? And 
there's nothing wrong in whatever size business you want to have. Okay, people make value judgments about that you're a great person because you've built a great business. Again, that's part of life. You know, you live your life the way that you want to live it. It's not up to me to make a value judgment on that. My role is to help you fulfill what it is about your life you want. So who would be in your organization when it is fulfilled its person, purpose in the years to come? What's it going to look like? And and the the um, the what, where, when are things like, so the when is, well, when are we talking about? Are we talking about five years time, 10 years time, 50 years time? Typically in planning, we come back to the, the uh, well, we come back to sort of 90 day plans, you know, what's happening in the next 12 months and the next 90 days in order to get to that longer term view. A client of mine that I've been working with for 15 years, we've built the, the business up. He's now, he's just a touch younger than me. And our theme now is chairman of the board. So he's in a highly specialised industry, but we've got to in three years time. So that's the when he needs to be chairman of the board. So his location won't change from his head office. Um, part of the where will be where we'll have marketing into different territories around the world. Uh, what's it going to be is what his business is now. The, the who is then comes back to this organisational chart. So if I work out all the people in the chart, what are they doing? There's a couple of ways of approaching this at the moment. The, the blank boxes aren't to indicate a certain number of people. It's just saying there's, there can be more people. If you're a sole operator, your name is going to be along every task in the business. So whether you like to refer to things as sales or, or not, when somebody phones up or messages you and makes a booking, we'll call that a sale. When they go from an inquiry to being a, a client, a patient, a customer, whatever you like to call them, um, then that we call that sales. The marketing is if you've got a website up, um, you know, you're in charge of marketing. That's marketing. So you're in charge of it. So your name goes in there. Uh, operations, the carrying out, the actual you know, profession is what you um, you do. Again, if it's just you, it's just your name. If there's if you're in an organization with more than 20 people, then you might have it could be as simple as um, that whilst whilst receptionists might sit in operations as something that takes place, there's a part of them there that we would call a sale when they book someone in. Okay, we'd have an agenda of a, a phone call coming in and I'll show you that in a moment to get them there. So this is filling in, there's a few ways you can go about doing this. There's the, well, let's fill it in now. What are the tasks in the business and who's doing them? Sometimes people do, here are the people in the business and here are the tasks they're doing. It's good to swap those around to because sometimes you'll go, oh, that doesn't make sense or we can be more efficient by doing it in another, another way. Then the other question that you ask, and this is what I'm doing with the client that I've said is now moving to the chairman of the board theme. At the moment, we're re, we've redone all the position descriptions. If you want a template of a position description, I'll give you an email address later. I can send you a simple template and a sample of, of that. Um, so we're looking at those position descriptions and then we're looking at, well, in the future for his organization, what would the organizational chart look like then? And that tells us what we're first looking for there is what we're trying to do is get rid of all of his jobs. And as you're growing the business, the purpose of the organizational chart is to grow the business, not just understand who does what. It is to grow the business. So we're looking at if he's got a, what are the jobs for him to get rid of? Are there jobs that need to be moved on from other people? So for instance, he's got uh, a head of finance and admin in the business. Um, for the business to get where he wants it to go, her she will lose some of the jobs that she does because as the business grows, parts of what she does will become bigger. So she's responsible for detailed financial analysis in the business, just making that work. She'll need to get an assistant in place, but he will need to get rid of some things. He'll need to get rid of some client facing appointments. So writing down, this is what everyone does now, this is what it's going to have to look like in the future to achieve the, the what. The what, as I said, could be where is it located? How much money are you making? Um, how many clients is it serving? Who is it serving out there in the world? All of those. Another way about going and doing that is this. So you actually map out the process. I really find it's great within a business 
You can do everything in your business from simply, and I'll put that in quotation marks, simply mapping out the customer journey within your business because everything feeds from that. You don't have a patient, a, you know, customer, you don't have a business without those people coming along. So if you map out their whole journey within your business, then you can ask all the questions that go with it. What do we have to do at that time? Who's the person that's going to have to do it? How much are we going to have to charge? All of those questions can be answered when you look at their customer journey. The simple view of this is this, you get a call. Now I put call, that could be a message and an email. I imagine nowadays it might be that they're just booking or through one of the, the health websites or you have that on your own website. But let's just imagine they're ringing up to find out, out about that. So the call comes in, the next step is you've got to book an appointment and then they come in and hold the appointment. Now that's a very simple view. So we can ask, well, who takes the call? The other thing that comes from that is, well, what are we, what are we actually saying in the call? If the next step is that we're going to book an appointment, what are all the processes and systems that have to be in place for that appointment to be booked? We're now actually building up a range of skills and tasks that the person taking that call would have to have. Good thing is we can systemize that. So I have an inquiry form that I use pretty much for every client, like a stand, a basic, basic inquiry form that gets them going with those processes so that everyone in the, the organization answers the phone the same way, that we know where we're getting to, that they know how to enter details into the computer if that's what they've got to do. So then they book the appointment. And again, between booking the appointment and holding the appointment, you know, if you go into the detail of that, is there a computer system? What's got to be entered into the computer system? What documentation has to be produced for the appointment to be held? Which is what we look at here. So you, you book the appointment, then what has to happen? You know, to get to hold the appointment, you actually have to prepare the records. So who's doing that? What records do you need? What system do you use? Is it on paper? Is it in a, in a computer? And then when the patient comes in, you've got to welcome them. So when they come in the door, what do you say to them? Do you have a rule like we would in retail that nobody's standing there for more than 30 seconds without being greeted? I was taught that by Kodak many years ago. For those on the coast, I opened Bay Photos at Bay Village back in 1988 and sold it a few years later. Loved it. What a great, I imagine in some ways, uh, a lot like what you guys get to do because we got to enjoy all the ups and some of the downs, but you know, all the ups of people's lives through the joys of creating memories. It was a fantastic place to be doing that. Just wonderful. Um, I imagine you get great joy when you see people uh, working through their, their health issues and becoming um, healthy. Uh, whilst I imagine it's also not as pleasant when people aren't healthy. Uh, so, you know, it's just asking the questions and then hold appointment. So what happens when you hold an appointment? Love to know, um, most people have their cameras turned off, but you can might just be able to type in, yes, who's heard of Dr. Paddy Lund, the dentist from Queensland? We can put in a no, just so I know that you can hear me. <laughs> no, okay. No, no, uh, and Kylie at the end, I'll give you an email and you can ask for templates. I've got a few things. No, 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 no. Okay, so yes, Damien, good stuff. Um, you're welcome to come on and tell us about him in, in a minute if you'd like, I mean, take one minute to tell us about him, Damien, if you want to open up, save me talking. So Dr. Paddy Lund is a dentist in Queensland. He's written a number of books. Paddy is P-A-D-D-I-E. I'll type it in there myself, Dr. Paddy Lund. Um, and uh, he he's a he created a business. What he worked out was that life wasn't actually too great. And he created a business where it's a happy business. His, one of his uh, books is called Building the Happiness Centered Business. And he, he put simple things in place, like he um, everyone in the business greets each other by name. They say, please and thank you. He doesn't have a drill. It's got a name like Mary. So if he wants the drill, he doesn't just turn to his dental assistant and say, give me the drill. It's um, Jane, would you hand me Mary, please? So it takes that scare out of the patient. But he also has no publicly available phone number, no marketing, nothing. He doesn't even work on referrals. You have to be 
invited to his practice to go and join his his practice. When you get there, the welcome from him, they'll welcome you in, but he will serve you tea, your choice of tea in a fine bone china tea set. He's got a coffee machine imported from Italy. Uh, Paddy's a little bit eccentric. He's talked talk at a conference of ours years ago, but he does those great things. Okay. So this is saying what you can do to create that organizational chart is also run through the customer journey, work out what are all the things, who, what, when, why, where, everything that has to happen along that journey. And then you can go back and fill in the organizational chart, work out from there. It's a great plan of, well, what's the first thing I'm going to change as I'm growing my business, looking after my customers, doing whatever I need to do to fulfill the purpose of the business. Some great ways of, of looking at that. This is Platinum Electricians. So th this comes down, once you've got the purpose and you've got those things going on, those behaviours, we need to get a clear idea of, um, we need to tell people about the culture of the business, the how you behave. This is Platinum Electricians in Sydney. Josh started, if you look at his website, when he was 22, he's a great young guy. Uh, this is copied from what Zappos Shoe Store online, zappos.com, used to do the, the way he's presented it, but it's fantastic. Create wow through customer service. That's really what his business is all about. When Josh was a young bloke, um, I've copied uh, a thing that he does that I call the three necessities of niche, and it was uh, turn up uh, on time preferably, do the job properly, leave you better than it found it. So he's come that. So everyone coming into his business gets told about these behaviours, told about these cultures. Um, Josh uh, is also quite religious and he has his own foundation. And one of the things that he wanted to do when he started the business was create money that could be used for benefiting the world. And he uh, does that now. I'm not sure where he's up to now. Um, easily could be a quarter of a million dollars a year that his business generates. So he's of the opinion that, you know, once he's got enough, he's got enough, and then he can use that to do good things in the world. So creating, you'll find most uh, good business people have that attitude. Um, so you've got the, lots of things about culture, about the place. Again, one of the templates I can send you from Action Coach is there how to create a vision, mission, and culture. Everything, everyone does things a little bit differently. There's no, and I don't think there's any right or wrong. It's just who do you want to be in business with? You know, what do you want that to be like? And then we come, so we've done externally, purpose of the business, vision of the business, internally. Well, what's it got to look like to achieve that? And then the last part is this. What's that going to do for you? Now, you can start here. Normally, when I start with business owners, what we do is start here. What do you want your life to look like? What's the purpose of your life? See, and that probably matches up with your business. We do what's called an alignment because alignment means that we're actually getting the, the business and your personal life to be on the on the same line. It's in line. So the the journey along the way, the little markers are just, well, when is that? Is that five years, 10 years, 20 years? Is it um, where are we up to? Is it 2005, 2000? And, sorry, we passed that <laughs> up to 2025, 2030. Is it when the kids go to school, when the kids leave school? You know, what are those markers for you? And then it's, well, what are the lifestyle goals? Is it, I want to have a new house by then? I want an investment property. I want to go on a holiday. I want to have saved amount of money, paid off debt. First thing we look at with clients is, you know, um, well, if you're going to achieve those lifestyle goals, we might need to pay off some debt first. So what are those for you along the way? It's a simple exercise to go through. And then you can have a look and go, well, if, if that's the lifestyle goal, what finances do you need to achieve that? So it, in some ways, it's that simple. Then what you do, and I'll, I'll ask you this, I'll show you mine. It's running really out of time. So here's what the world's about for me. So I've, I've got three cruise ships and that's Lake Louise in um, Canada. You might tell me if you've been there. Beautiful spot. They were, our bucket list uh, trip was Rocky Mountains in Alaska. My wife and I are cruisers. We were cruisers before, <laughs> before COVID, hoping that that will come back at some stage. I've actually been on all of those ships now, so I've got to invent some new things. Um, been to Lake Louise, absolutely wonderful. That was so one of the things we set up in, in what were our lifestyle goals were to go on holidays. 
So before I would plan my year around what are the two holidays I'm taking for the year. And the other big part for me now is I'm a grandfather and that's my four granddaughters. Little Luna there, just born on, born on the 14th of February. Um, uh, Luella, the big, uh, the, the big baby, she's, um, she's, what's she now, eight months old. So, you know, they're my joy. I have three OPA days where one of them's today at four o'clock, I go and pick my, the, um, the, the baby in black and the one with the red on her t-shirt, I go and pick them up from daycare. Nothing gets in the way of that. That's my life. I've got other goals in place as well, but that's just an example. What's life look like for you is what we're asking. I want you to stop and I want you to think about that. I want, you know, um, Gina, Lake Louise is absolutely beautiful and it's one of my favourite pictures. I think it's um, sunset with the, it goes pink. Just an amazing place to, to visit. Canada's fantastic. Uh, you might even meet a Canadian instead of an Australian or New Zealander while you're over there. You never know. Um, the, if you take one of those goals that you have, you can type in the chat form if you can. What's a goal that you have personally in life? Is it to buy a home, pay off your home, buy an investment property, go on a holiday? Um, Elizabeth, a friend of mine went there in winter and was able to walk on it. I'm a bit afraid of the Canadian winter. We've just got a friend out from uh, Canada at the moment whom I won't go and visit her over there anymore because it's too cold. Go on two holidays a year. Lovely, Kylie. Unhurried time. I love that. If it's un, if it's un, if it's Unhurried time, what sort of time is it? Is that relaxed time, Rachel? Drop kids at school and pick them up. That's beautiful, Jess. So just imagine when you take those and, and you think about if you were dropping the kids at school and picking them up, if you had that holiday for three weeks, you've got to imagine what's the holiday. Um, if, if you were at Lake Louise enjoying it, if you think about that and close your eyes and think about it, Imagine what that's like. What's the temperature? What's the what's the day like? Uh, what's the, what are the noises out there? What are the smells? If you're going to put yourself into that situation and then imagine what's the feeling I'm feeling now. That's what we do to drive us towards our goals as well. And you can do that same thing when you look at the purpose of your business. What's it like? You know, for me, what's it like? when I have empowered somebody to live an exceptional life. It's awesome. And the exceptional life, because that's, yeah, the kids have taken on the, the philosophies we teach. It's like cultish. They've taken on the philosophies that we teach. That's awesome. I, I, I'm a sook, so I cry when I talk about my clients. They mean a lot to me. Care, remember, one of those three words. So what's that like for you? So that's where... I'm looking at the time, said so pretty, pretty quick, hopefully enough in detail in there to get you going with these things. Um, you know, what is the what is the purpose? There's a lot to do there once you've once you've got those original parts uh, thought through. What's the business got to look like? What's the practice got to look like? All of those things. Draw up the organisational chart. Happy to have a chat with you. You can contact me. Um, not a problem. That's what I do in the world is talk to people about how to make their lives and through their businesses better. So what are three lessons that you've got to, from today? I want you to take the time and write those down, 60 seconds. And then what are three actions you're going to take to move forward? Three lessons, three actions. And if you wouldn't mind sharing some of those in the chat, if you want to come off mute, you can. If you've got a question that you'd like to ask, put it in the chat or just come off mute and ask away. 
Mark, it's okay, Kylie here. Subconscious thoughts. Yes, Kylie. Look, um, can you just explain three lessons or lessons again? Oh, I what, sorry, what three lessons? What, what three yeah. things have you got out of today? What have you been, what have you learnt, be reminded of? Um, anything. Work-life balance and be there for the kids. So I love that, Louise. And then that becomes, if you actually go back to your organisational chart and put that in there, if, that, if that's a goal, then the, the what we've got to do is set up the organisation to work towards that. Well, how do we be there for the kids? What does the business actually have to look like for that to happen? Do I need to have, the, um, if it's a you know sole trader, sole practitioner, do I need to get somebody else in? Do I cut back? A lot of what we know, because it, it happens in all businesses, but I think especially in, in allied health, people want to do good for the good for the world. And sometimes, strangely enough, the the way you do good for the world, it can actually be by doing less. So one of my lessons when I went through business coach training, we played volleyball every day um, and there was a winning team. There's 25 of us going through and we'd raised two and a half thousand US dollars by the end of training and it was up to the winning team to do what they wanted with it. And the natural reaction of people is give it to charity. And the lesson for us was, what if you did something with it? So instead of giving two and a half thousand dollars once, you gave it over and over. How about if you invested that money and got a client, decided to give one client's worth of uh, fees every month to charity? How about if you go and speak at charity events for free? So there's often you can actually achieve more. It's like the Nobel Prize, you know, um, came from the Nobels were dynamite producers. And uh, when whoever it was, Alfred, Alfred Albert, decided that uh, he needed to try and make amends with that. So invested money that was then uh, that it has borne interest and produced more and more money over the years to keep providing for the Nobel Prizes. Uh, make time for resources in the area, right? Write it down, display your vision and goals to see each day. Yeah, so my, my um, ships and everything there, they're actually up on a vision board. Here's the things that I want to do. Great, believe in that stuff. Write down patient journey. I, I love the patient journey because that that everything in the business, you can ask every question about the business from that. Read more and consolidate company values. Company values, huge. They don't have to be, uh, come back to behaviours. This is what you do in this situation. That's why Patty Lund stuff so good at sleep. You use people's first names and last names you say please and thank you you if it's a shake hands or give kiss whatever's appropriate you know is their touch uh, yeah mindfulness is so important abigail yeah appreciating the day-to-day -day. the gratitude is one of the things one of our 14 points of culture so abundance and gratitude are the last two of our 14 too many for most organizations uh, but really really important um, Ask stuff the initial questions, yeah. And when you're bringing people on, so we we uh, do that. If you have a look, for those on the coast might know uh, Loyal IT Solutions at Gosford. Uh, if you have a look on their website, you'll see their code of honour. And in interviewing people, that code of honour is run through it. So we use it. It's up on their website. It's up in their office. It's all over the place. And it gets, they also have the fish philosophy. And in organisational meetings, like team meetings each week, people are asked to give an example of how they demonstrated that culture. And again, they come back to if something didn't go well, they're saying what point of our code of honour, they refer to it as, what point of our code of honour did we miss? What did we not do well on? How do we fix that again? So business might like seem like it's all about profit, but most, you know, 90% of businesses in Australia are, are not that big and, and um, people want to do the right thing and help other people. So, uh, Charles is going to throw up another Slido for you. It's a very simple question to finish off. Uh, which one would you like, Marcus? Uh, the word There's cloud a, or, or the multiple yeah, word choice? Cloud. The word cloud, yeah. Oh, what was that? Did I miss a multiple choice? Charles, sorry. That's okay. There was one about, um, do you have goals or plans for your organisation? Oh, this is, sorry, that's my mind rushing through. 
we don't need to worry about that one. That's right. Mr. I'll launch the word cloud now. I like this one. Triumphant, love that. It's good to feel good. We really need it. We need to make other people feel feel good. Thank you for that. Uh, if you've got any last questions, we do have a few minutes left on the official part of the broadcast. Uh, you can email me. I'm just marcus at marcuscroic.com or .com.au comes through. Uh, happy to meet with anyone to talk some more about it. If you want the templates, the things, I mean, I've got stacks of templates, I assure you. Um, what did I write down? Position, a simple position description template, just a one pager to get you going. Uh, creating a vision, mission and culture, a version of that from Action Coach I can send you through. If you want a sample of an organizational chart or that thing that we did up there as a Word document, if you just email um, Casey and put template, in the subject line and introduce yourself. Uh, she'll just send them back to you. I'll just send you all of them, okay? Very simple. If you wanna go on a, well, I hate calling it a newsletter. If you wanna get things from me about events coming up or um, we do all sorts of content out there, uh, you're welcome to just email Casey as well. And she'll put it up there. Casey is my client concierge. So that's her job to look after people. Any questions? Okay, so um, you're very welcome, Jenna. Thank you. I love getting up and, and uh, moving forward. The, our presentations coming up will all stand by themselves, but they all tie in together. When we get to what makes you stand out from the crowd, we're going to be talking about the purpose of the business at the same time. Because when you get that right, when it's not just done for uh, the sake of standing out from the crowd and having more clients, that's far more powerful. When we talk about financials, I've got profit first up there, it all ties in together. So you can link all of these together and you'll see that there's crossover between them and like, oh, that's how it fits with that. Got it. Or they'll stand by themselves. Um, in the financials, we'll be explaining how financials work. But we'll also be looking at Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. That's the system I use for cash management. The, again, the point simply being that these will stand alone. Uh, they all do tie in together as well. So as you go along, you'll be able to come back to things that you've done and develop those along the way and ask me more questions about those along the way. So two minutes to go, so I better be quiet, Charles. Thanks again very much, guys, for being here. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. I'm very grateful to be able to share what I know and I hope that it uh, helps your lives and businesses move forward. Thanks. Thanks very much, Margaret. That was great. Um, obviously, it takes the opportunity to say a big thank you for being a part of this series and pre preparing all this information, presenting. Um, and I'd also just like to acknowledge Jo Dean. Jo's one of our project officers. She's done lots of work in the background to get this series up and running. So thanks, Jo. And of course, thank you everyone for joining us and for your interaction in the polls and in the chat. Um, a reminder that this session has been recorded. So um, the recording will become available in our education library on our website. So if you haven't accessed our library before, you just head to our homepage, which is the phn.com.au. And there's an education tab in the top right hand corner. Um, there, we, what we've also developed for this series is um, an online form for you to submit questions for Marcus. So what I'll do, I'll email that link out to you all this afternoon. Um, and the process that we have, in, obviously there might be something that you think of after this session that you'd like to ask Marcus. If you type it into that form, I'll collate those um, and give them to Marcus and he's gonna do a video response for us. So. Um, so within a week's time, we'll have, if you want to send your questions in, um, we'll, I'll post you a link to Marcus's uh, video response and we'll do that for each session. So I'll send that, that link out to that questions form. Um, and just lastly, you'll see now on Slider that the evaluation survey has popped up. If we could just steal a couple more minutes of your time before you log off. 
um, and you could please fill that out for us. We really appreciate your feedback. Um, just so I can capture your attendance as well, if you would like a certificate of attendance, please fill out that evaluation form for me. Um, uh, the next session is on Tuesday the 15th of March. This is also a lunch session, so all of those registration links are on that same flyer. So if you yet to register, uh, please do so. Um, and like this session, I'll send out the worksheets that Marcus prepares um, in the days leading up to that session. Um, but of course, if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, that's all from me. Um, any final words, Marcus? <laughs> Live a life of abundance. Live, go and enjoy your life. Help other people. Wonderful. Thank you. Final word will be, as I said, if you want to you know, have a chat with me about any of this, it's just uh, you can hop on my website or send an email and we'll make a time. Here to help. Great. Thank you. All right, everyone, we'll leave it there. Um, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoons.